I'm going to kind of talk about a morbid topic, but I would like to bring out possibilities in this very, you know, difficult to hear word called cancer. And what we are trying to do, and what we are trying to do right here in Pune in India, which is affecting the lives of hundreds and thousands of patients. Oh, you must have read a lot of Shakespeare in school. I'm sure they teach you Shakespeare, or you must have heard of Shakespeare. Uh, one of the finest authors in the world, and uh, he used to flesh his characters out very beautifully. So some of, one of the greatest villains created by Shakespeare was a man named Iago in the novel Othello. So Iago was a deceptive, two-faced, manipulative, Machiavellian kind of a villain who is often described as the perfect villain. From an Indian concept, uh, if you have heard of the movie Omkara and the character of Langda Tyagi, so that is Iago, basically. Now take this villain, this really horrible guy, and multiply it a million times, and you have a villain that is so devastating, so powerful, known as the cancer cell that we're going to talk about today. Now, now I don't need to tell you, every one of you must have you know, had family or uh, friends or people that you know who have faced this uh, abomination. And this is not stopping down. This, this disease is growing, and uh, the projections are that this will go up much higher in the coming years because of a variety of reasons. And if you see the top cancers in India, we have head and neck cancer, which is oral cancer, which is the highest. Easily avoidable cancer. If you stop, if the people who eat gutka, pan masala, and chewing are, are you know, they stop it, right? But it is an epidemic in India. It's, it's, it's something that is more in India than anywhere in the world. So what can we do to kind of, you know, work and try to prevent this or try to find a cure? And that is what my company uh, is trying to do. Now, we have to first understand what cancer is. Cancer is not a single disease. It is rather a combination of hundreds of diseases with different kinds of biology and different kinds of you know, ways it, it progresses. But there are some certain hallmarks that define this as a cancer. One, there is proliferation of uh, cancer cells. The structure of a cancer cell is very abnormal. It's very different from a normal cell. It has resistance to cell death. Now, we have cells that need to grow, divide, and then die. Right? So we have skin cells. Why do we take bath, right? We want to ensure that the old dead skin cells are removed, right? But if that doesn't happen, that leads to cancer. It has in ability to invade and spread. This is the most dangerous hallmark of cancer. It is called as metastasis. Metastasis causes a cancer to move from one part of the body to another and then grow there, right? It is like migration. And the most important thing to understand in a cancer is that cancer cells are genetically driven. The genes drive the cancer. So they have an altered gene expression. And to make matters worse, a single tumor may have heterogeneous kind of uh, genetic drivers. So if you're attacking one kind of genetic driver, the other may grow. So there is resistance to cancer. Now, I would like to talk about two very important uh, concepts here. Uh, and I'll, I'll try to not make it very technical, but something known as a minimal residual disease. So if you see this on the uh, vertical axis, there is tumor load. On the horizontal axis, there is time. The diagnosis happens pretty late. Most of the diagnosis is symptomatic in nature. Like you get some symptoms, and then you come to know that it's cancer, right? And then you are given treatment, it goes back, and then it comes back again. Your PET scan is clean. So what happens is current techniques, the gold standard is a PET scan. Now, there is a level below where the PET scan cannot see, the cancer can still exist. And that threshold is known as the minimal residual disease threshold. And we have to build technologies to detect cancer at that level. Once we do that, we have an understanding that the cancer is there or it has gone. And we are able to deal with it subsequently. So if you see this example, the cancer has relapsed, it has developed drug resistance, and it leads to mortality. This is the case in most of the cancers. The second thing which I also talked about earlier is tumor heterogeneity, which means one tumor can have many subclonal populations, which means if you target one aspect of the uh, uh, cancer, the other aspects will resist the drug and grow. So this is what causes problem in cancer therapy, where we feel that we are winning, that the tumor is shrinking, and then suddenly you see that it's all reversing back. So these are two important concepts to understand why cancer is so devastating. Now, the world is moving towards something known as precision medicine, and what we, the field we work is, in called, is called precision oncology. Now, precision oncology says that, it works on a theorem that every person is unique. You have to tailor the treatment 
to that particular person and not treat him as say, a lung cancer patient, but say as a lung cancer patient who has this certain genetic disposition and this certain traits, right? And based on that you treat. The traditional approach was to treat every say, for example, lung cancer patient as the same therapy, right? That is changing now and we are moving towards something known as precision oncology. We have a long way to go, but the start is good because at least we have identified that these cancers can be treated at an individual level. To do this, there is a field known as liquid biopsy. Traditional tissue biopsy requires you to uh, poke a needle into the tumor and pull out a few cells, right? But liquid biopsy focuses on taking a small uh, you know, portion of your blood and looking at all that has been shed into the bloodstream, right? So your DNA, your RNA, the circulating tumor cells, exosomes, platelets, you know, we look at these biomarkers and try to figure out what is different, what is going on, what is, and this causes much less trouble to the patient because it's just about a few ml of blood than a, a biopsy which can be very painful and sometimes in cancers it cannot be done because of the location of the uh, cancer. Coming to what we do, so we had this idea that can we capture these circulating tumor cells, right, and interrogate them to figure out what is going on, right. So circulating tumor cells are cells that shed from the primary tumor and go into the bloodstream and then invade other organs. Now, the, the, the theory is that one gram of tumor can shed about one million cells into the bloodstream, okay. But most, it's like a raging river. So most of these cells due to the sheer stress and strain will die. But some of them will still uh, find a way to invade the body and then um, uh, cause a secondary tumor. It's called a secondary metastasis. So why is it difficult capturing these CTCs, right? It is like finding a needle in a haystack. If you take one ml of blood, you have one billion red blood cells, few million white blood cells, in that maybe one or two circulating tumor cells. So out of this kind of uh, entity, how do you find the circulating tumor cells? Now, Dr. Jayant Khandare, my partner and I, we started this company in 2013 with the sole objective of capturing the cancer cell. Dr. Khandare is one of the finest scientists in India, I would say, in the world. Uh, he built this uh, antibody-based nanosystem, it's our, our own patent, and we were able to capture cancer cells at a very high sensitivity and figure out even if there is one cancer cell in the blood, uh, blood uh, this thing, we'll be able to find it. And we uh, patented this technology, we got an approval. So, we, so in India, basically, the innovation ecosystem is such that we buy medical devices from outside. We don't build our own medical devices. So when we got the approval for this medical device, we became the first company in the history of India to get a medical device approval. Now, this is a, this is a photo that you would not normally see. It's so beautiful. It's like looking, peering into the sky through a Hubble telescope and looking at a distant planet. But this is the most dangerous entity in the world. It's a cancer cell. Look how it lights up under a fluorescent microscope. So this is one cancer cell from a breast cancer patient that we captured and that we'd like you to see. And this can cause havoc in the system. Now, what are we trying to do? So I'll, I'll conclude my talk with you know, two or three things that we are trying to do. Now that we have captured this cancer cell, how do we interrogate them? What is possible? So cancer cell contains an ocean of information. So a single cancer cell will contain a DNA, it will contain an RNA, it will contain proteins, it will contain metabolites, right? We can interrogate this and figure out in that particular patient what kind of biological activity is going on, why these cancers are growing, how it is different. If you get, say, multiple cancer cells, how each cells are different, is there a clonal subpopulation? And we're trying to figure that out, and we are one of the early companies to do this kind of work. So this is very interesting for us in the sense that this will really take precision oncology to the next level. Now that we have access to the cancer cell, we are thinking why not recreate the cancer environment and see how they grow, how they spread, what kind of activities they are trying to do, make them feel as if the cancer cell is still in the body so that we understand the spread and understand how the metastasis is going to happen. Now, typical cell culture is two-dimensional, where you put your culture in a plate and a media and allow it to grow, right? But two-dimensional media does not represent the real body, right? The cells in that body live in a three-dimensional media. So what we did is we created a spheroid in which we put the media in between and we tried to grow the cells in. Now, these cells are able to grow at a much faster rate and are able to show better properties uh, or similar properties to the cancer growing in the body 
because they are in that three-dimensional media. They can they do something known as cellular crosstalk. They are able to talk to each other. Okay, where are the nutrients? Where can we grow? Where can we grow blood vessels? Right. So these kind of things happen, and we are trying to grow these uh, things so that we can predict better drug response. For example, so for example, if there is a cancer patient, we take his blood, we remove the cancer cells, grow them in our uh, you know spiroidal media, and then test various drugs on it to figure out which one of the drugs will be effective. So this is one uh, we are very excited about this kind of work. A lot of labs in the world are doing, and we are also trying to figure out the best way to understand the metastasis process. And finally, and this is like a very bold, uh, you know, activity that we are trying to do. People may call us crazy. All drugs and technologies are towards the primary or secondary tumor. But what about the cells that are going into the blood, right? Which are the ones actually causing the death? How are we attacking them? So we are trying to create a dialysis-like system which can remove the cancer cells, right, and send the good blood back in. So if you can do a dialysis, uh, you know, a regular period, we actually help the re reduction of the tumor burden on the patient. So these are the few things that we are trying to do and trying to build the ecosystem. Cancer is, as a disease, trillions of dollars have been spent, and we are still, you know, it's like, you know, it's the universe, right? We only know very little about it. And we are trying to grow this, uh, uh, this uh, field into something that, you know, Indian uh, students and, you know, people like you will try to get into this innovation ecosystem, build the next generation of cancer technologies and allow, allow us to fight this dreaded disease. Uh, a famous pathologist in the 1880s known as Stephen Paget said, those who are doing the best work in the cancer pathology are studying the seed. 130 years later, I can say we are actually studying the seed. So... I, I, I wish that, you know, more and more people will join us in this scientific journey and create innovations to, you know, uh, help the scientific ecosystem to fight this dreaded disease. Thank you.